August 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. Here is a message about Judah and Jerusalem that was revealed to Isaiah, son of Amoz, during the time when Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah reigned over Judah. Listen, O heavens, pay attention, O earth, for the Lord speaks. I raised children, I brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. An ox recognizes its owner, a donkey recognizes where its owner puts its food, but Israel does not recognize me, my people do not understand. The sinful nation is as good as dead, the people weighed down by evil deeds. They are offspring who do wrong, children who do wicked things. They have abandoned the Lord and rejected the Holy One of Israel. They are alienated from Him. Why do you insist on being battered? Why do you continue to rebel? Your head has a massive wound. Your whole body is weak. From the soles of your feet to your head, there is no spot that is unharmed. There are only bruises, cuts, and open wounds. They have not been cleansed or bandaged, nor have they been treated with olive oil. Your land is devastated, your cities burned with fire. Right before your eyes, your crops are being destroyed by foreign invaders. They leave behind devastation and destruction. Daughter Zion is left isolated, like a hut in a vineyard or a shelter in a cucumber field. She is a besieged city. If the Lord who commands armies has not left us a few survivors, we would have quickly become like Sodom. We would have become like Gomorrah. Listen to the Lord's word, you leaders of Sodom. Pay attention to our God's rebuke, people of Gomorrah. Of what importance to me are your many sacrifices, says the Lord. I am stuffed with burnt sacrifices of rams and the fat from steers, the blood of bulls, lambs, and goats I do not want. When you enter my presence, do you actually think I want this? Animals trampling on my courtyards? Do not bring any more meaningless offerings. I consider your incense detestable. You observe new moon festivals, Sabbaths, and convocations, but I cannot tolerate sin-stained celebrations. I hate your new moon festivals and assemblies. They are a burden that I am tired of carrying. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I look the other way. When you offer your many prayers, I do not listen because your hands are covered with blood. Wash, cleanse yourselves, remove your sinful deeds from my sight. Stop sinning. Learn to do what is right, promote justice, give the oppressed reason to celebrate. Take up the cause of the orphan, defend the rights of the widow. Come, let's consider your options, says the Lord. Though your sins have stained you like the color red, you can become white like snow. Though they are as easy to see as the color scarlet, you can become white like wool. If you have a willing attitude and obey, then you will again eat the good crops of the land. But if you refuse and rebel you will be devoured by the sword. Know for certain that the Lord has spoken. How tragic that the once faithful city has become a prostitute. She was once a center of justice, fairness resided in her, but now only murderers. Your silver has become scum, your beer is diluted with water. Your officials are rebels, they associate with thieves. All of them love bribery and look for payoffs. They do not take up the cause of the orphan or defend the rights of the widow. Therefore, the sovereign Lord who commands armies, the powerful ruler of Israel, says this, I will seek vengeance against my adversaries. I will take revenge against my enemies. I will attack you. I will purify your metal with flux. I will remove all your slag. I will reestablish honest judges as in former times, wise advisors as in earlier days. Then you will be called the just city, faithful town. Zion will be freed by justice and her returnees by righteousness. All rebellious sinners will be shattered. Those who abandon the Lord will perish. Indeed, they will be ashamed of the sacred trees you find so desirable. You will be embarrassed because of the sacred orchards where you choose to worship. For you will be like a tree whose leaves wither, like an orchard that is unwatered. The powerful will be like a thread of yarn, their deeds like a spark. Both will burn together and no one will put out the fire. Here is the message about Judah and Jerusalem that was revealed to Isaiah, son of Amos. 
In the future, the mountain of the Lord's temple will endure as the most important of mountains and will be the most prominent of hills. All the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, come, let us go up to the Lord's mountain, to the temple of the God of Jacob, so he can teach us his requirements and we can follow his standards. For Zion will be the center for moral instruction. The Lord will issue edicts from Jerusalem. He will judge disputes between nations. He will settle cases for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up the sword against other nations, and they will no longer train for war. O descendants of Jacob, come, let us walk in the Lord's guiding light. Indeed, O Lord, you have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. For diviners from the east are everywhere. They consult omen readers like the Philistines do. Plenty of foreigners are around. Their land is full of gold and silver. There is no end to their wealth. Their land is full of horses. There is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of worthless idols. They worship the product of their own hands, what their own fingers have fashioned. Men bow down to them in homage. They lie flat on the ground in worship. Don't spare them. Go up into the rocky cliffs, hide in the ground, get away from the dreadful judgment of the Lord, from his royal splendor. Proud men will be brought low, arrogant men will be humiliated, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. Indeed, the Lord who commands armies has planned a day of judgment. For all the high and mighty, for all who are proud, they will be humiliated. For all the cedars of Lebanon that are so high and mighty, for all the oaks of Bashan, for all the tall mountains, for all the high hills, for every tower, for every fortified wall, for all the large ships, for all the impressive ships. Proud men will be humiliated. Arrogant men will be brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The worthless idols will be completely eliminated. They will go into caves in the rocky cliffs and into holes in the ground, trying to escape the dreadful judgment of the Lord in his royal splendor when he rises up to terrify the earth. At that time, men will throw their silver and gold idols, which they made for themselves to worship, into the caves where rodents and bats live. So they themselves can go into the crevices of the rocky cliffs and the openings under the rocky overhangs, trying to escape the dreadful judgment of the Lord in his royal splendor when he rises up to terrify the earth. Stop trusting in human beings whose life's breath is in their nostrils, for why should they be given special consideration? God, thank you for the book of Isaiah. I'm so excited to get in here and read it and record it and study it more. Um, I love the classes I've taken at seminary on Isaiah. He's just a crazy awesome prophet. Uh, sometimes more crazy. <laughs> but he's just an amazing, powerful prophet. Just an uh, incredible man of your word and sharing your word. And, and most important, he is a prophet called by you uh, to give out truth um, either currently what is happening or in the case of Isaiah being a prophet also what will happen in the future predicting what will happen in the future and the first couple sentences of Isaiah start off with exactly what the book of Isaiah is going to be talking about that redeeming Jesus Christ who is coming and then the ultimate end of the world coming of the new kingdom and what our responsibility is to that announcement. And when I read those first couple sentences, my heart really breaks uh, because here you have told your people, Israel, the same thing over and over and over again um, through, through Moses and Abraham of, listen to me. <laughs> But it never rang more true than today when I was studying uh, these particular chapters that we recorded. And I realized where you said, I raised children, I brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. And I, I have the honor of working with a lot of the teenage kids at my church. And I, th I see that sadness and desperation and hurt and pain in the parents' heart and in their eyes and in the their voice 
when kids do that to them, when they rebel, when they lie, when, when they're caught doing evil things, uh, when they refuse to follow you, God, and, and pursue a relationship with you, I just see this incredible pain in these parents' lives, and it, it has always broken my heart, and, and yet on a much more important scale, that's exactly what we have done to you. We have been rebellious children uh, to the umpteenth level. And more importantly, it's not like we're children. It's not like we're teenagers who don't know better. We very clearly, especially in this day and age, know who you are, what your character is about. We have access to your word in a multitude of congregations. We have access to endless amounts of Bible and your, your word online. There is no excuse for a single person, at least here in the United States, to not seek you with their whole heart, their whole mind. And yet even those of us who, who are Christians, who have a new heart, we still get this wrong so often. We turn away from you. We choose idols. Our idols are more modern day idols like the internet, um, TV, um, relationships can be idols. And, and we choose evilness over you. And then just like Isaiah talks about in this first chapter, we feel abandoned by you. We feel alienated from you, yet it is our own actions that created that feeling. I always know when I'm on the right track with you. I can feel you. It, it may be even in some of my hardest times, but I can feel you. You are there with me. You are holding my hand. You are guiding my steps. And yet, interestingly enough, uh, when I'm not behaving, when I'm not being obedient, when I'm not being humble, when I am choosing other things besides what you want for me in this life, the best things you want for me in this life, you seem really far away. And it's so ironic that that's even the words that we use, that you seem so far away when it's really us who just haven't got this. Um, in this particular couple passages, Isaiah is talking about how after all these generations, the people just kind of gave up on you, God. Um, the belief that another idol could give them what they want, and also without as many repercussions <laughs> as, as they had in the, in the Old Testament, and we do as New Testament Christians also, um, that seemed very enticing to them. Um, and why not have, if you have one idol, why not have a couple idols? So if one of them fails you, uh, you've got a, you know, a backup source. And I know what my backup sources, I know what my backup idols are. Um, they're some of my biggest sin areas. And it's the ones that you know that I struggle with the hardest. And all, all of those areas have been thrown back up in my face in the last couple of weeks. And I'm back at it again. You and I working on this. And what does this look like to be obedient? Um, to not sin against you. To not choose those secondary idols um, that temporarily... Uh, make me feel better make me feel good you didn't call us to a life of of easiness you didn't call us to a life of comfort uh, you actually called us to a life of persecution and i know that that's scary for a lot of people and a lot of people would rather choose the comforts of this world than their eternal reward that would come from you god i pray for everyone listening today i suspect a lot of them feel like the people in this um, started the poem the poetry that Isaiah is writing down about being battered about having wounds about having your body weak and I know when I go after those secondary idols those things that temporarily make me feel good I end up feeling far worse than I would have if I had just followed your plan for my life and God I know there's so many people listening today who are in that same situation they feel beat up, they feel tired, they feel exhausted, they feel like they can't do anything right, they feel like perhaps that you've abandoned them. And I was just reading um, Psalm 73 that Asaph wrote. I think I should memorize this psalm. <laughs> and he's talking about, to you God, I I've been, in, I've tried to be pure in heart, but my my life is about to stumble. My heart is about to stumble because I'm so incredibly jealous of those around me. They don't worship you. Their life isn't devoted to you, God. 
And yet you give them things. You give them money and cars and relationships and, and anything that it seems that their heart desires. Asaph says that their bodies are fat and sleek and they have no troubles. <laughs> and he goes on to talk about their pride and their arrogance and their intentional malice towards other people. And he's very agitated that they get all of these things and yet they speak out against you. Not only in their lifestyle, but they intentionally speak out against you, God. And then he goes on to say, but when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I discerned their end. Truly you set them in slippery places. You make them fall to ruin. And God, we know as Asaph goes on to talk, he talks about you will take care of that. You will take care of the justice of that. That even though we are choosing secondary idols that temporarily make us feel good, those idols will bring destruction to us and ultimately bring your justice. And we see that very clearly in the Old Testament. In the New Testament too, you can see it, but very clearly in the Old Testament. And Asaph sees this. He sees ultimately not in Asaph's timing, but in your timing, he sees that justice happen. He sees what you uh, have set them up to fall into. And, and again, since they've chosen idols, the destruction that they're going to go through is so much worse because the pain that they're going through is going to be a path without you. They've chosen to not do life with you. And God, We've chosen to do life with you. We know your power. We know your sovereignty. We know your forgiveness. We know your love. We know your grace. We know your mercy. We don't know the depths of it, but we definitely know your characters. And we know that when we choose those secondary idols, again, whether they be finances or work or recreational drugs or alcohol, we know that ultimately those are going to put us in a place where the little bit of hurt that we were trying to fix by putting those idols in place is going to be far worse. Those type of idols are going to leave us battered or going to leave us with wounds or going to leave us so that we're in a more, much more painful situation. Thankfully, at least for me, when I got to that point, I found you and more importantly, you found me at that point and, and gave me a new heart in you. God, help me realize completely that the temporary things of this world will never be able to fix my life, will never be able to give me what you can give me, and will never ever be able to provide the comfort and love and security that I truly have with you as your child. Asaph goes on to say, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of all your works. God, allow your light to be my refuge today. In my pain, allow me to seek you. Help guide my steps to head towards your direction, towards your will, instead of these other idols that are so tempting to use temporarily to soothe my life. And allow my life in the pain and in the good times to tell of all your works so that my life glorifies you so that all glory is about you in your son's name i pray amen